I want to first, uh, uh, hands, Khan, you keep quiet. Khan was my uh, PhD student at Tesla Co. He was actually a master's degree student with a K and spent a couple of years in a, in a Tesla Co. And uh, now he's a master of power electronics, okay? Or PhD, let's say. Okay, so he's quiet, but anybody else, who do you think uh, invented the transformer? And a transformer is a beautiful device that even nowadays people don't appreciate. Any clue? I, I, I get a, you know, a Fortune magazine carried some article with some of the scientific writers. Says, oh, you take Tesla invented a transformer, and AC, and so on. He didn't. It was a, 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 some guy named Gilbert in Germany who invented the transformer. Yeah, the Gilbert in Germany, 50 years after the invention of the transformer, uh, made it. Uh, 50 kilowatt, water cooled, oil cooled, or whatever. You know, that's just engineering. It has nothing to do with the concept. Well, let's go and, and say who did it. Okay. You heard of this guy? Faraday. What Faraday invented? He invented a concept of electromagnetic induction. For years, people knew you put a current, and uh, Ersted invented when you put a wire, and you put a DC current through it, you generate the DC field, and if you have a magnetic needle, it'll just, just point in the right direction. So you use the magnet needle to orient north, south, whatever. And the people for years tried to create magnetic field to uh, establish a permanent current in, in the winding. And even uh, Faraday in 1831 tried to do that and failed for quite a while. And story goes like one day he just had assistant and he had a very sensitive instruments and these instruments were galvanometer making milliamps of the current and so on but it so happened until that day he would flip a switch and go in a room where there was a, a sensitive galvanometer to see the current and never saw it until one day he told his assistant to turn on a switch and he was in a room and the galvanometer said and just during that switch needle uh, moved and, and moved back and forth. It says you need a, a changing electromagnetic field. And that was invention of a transformer. And what is the beauty of a transformer, even nowadays, that the people don't realize it, there are two things. One, that was immediately obvious with the Faraday's invention of it, and that is this. The uh, transformer has the two windings. And what I said, remember these two windings are two inductances, okay? Large inductances, but, but they're not, they don't have a DC in it. They're AC inductances. And when you put here current in this dot, I1, what happens? There is a dot connection in the other winding. Current comes out of the dot, not into the dot. So the beauty of a transformer is it doesn't store energy. It actually, if you're on a perfect transformer with a one-to-one -one ratio, you have a square wave current, and the same square wave current shows up on the output instantaneously. Okay? No storage. Fantastic. That's number one property of it. Number two is galvanic property. Uh, isolates the primary and secondary side. And number three property is you can't have a transformer like this. This is so-called ideal transformer. The real transformer is made of magnetic material. And that means if you uh, put a voltage here and you measure the current, you make a very little current because this inductance will be huge. Oh, yes. <laughs> Bernie Sanders said huge, right? <laughs> so, uh, so this huge, and what is this inductance? That is what we call a magnetizing inductance. That is large because there is no gap, and it takes for whatever voltage, because this inductance, you know, it could be, uh, you know, in a good uh, ferret, uh, ferromagnetic material like uh, silicon steel and so on, this could be, uh, you know, uh, Henry or so. So you have a milliamp of the current, milliamp of the current going here. And what is this milliamp of current? This current on input generates a flux in a core. So 
changing voltage here generates a changing current here, changing current generates a changing flux in the core. And guess what? Changing flux in the core induces a voltage on the next line, a snack, uh, other uh, winding which is not electrically connected to it. That's the beauty of a, of a transformer. And you know what it is? Does this change? in magnitude, depending on how much current. Suppose I just dramatically show, yeah, oh, you want to put uh, uh, 10 times uh, uh, bigger current. Okay, you'll get 10 times bigger current. Transformer never saturates on current. They tell you lies, and a lot of people have a total misunderstanding what about transformers and transformers will saturate. It never saturates because it's designed on a voltage support, not the current. So, uh, so if this is a current, I1, and current I2, you can pass the unlimited current. Of course you won't, because what happens? We put 10 times more current, wires are not sized for it, so they'll melt. Okay, so, so there's a limitation there, but it's not related to, sorry, it's not related to, to the fundamental concept that it saturates with it. So, so therefore, okay, so therefore, um, here we, we have the transformer. So, uh, and I just uh, get to one aspect of the transformer which is three. Transformer has to have galvanic isolation, but it's not enough. It has not storing energy, and you see in that fireback that I showed you, there is only one inductor. It's easy to split inductor into windings, and you get a, a isolation, meaning a galvanic isolation. But it is a two winding storage inductor. It is not a transformer, and that's bad news, okay? And uh, so, but the other thing, which is here, this is in, in the days of Tesla, uh, we only talk about 60 hertz. And that's why we are in an exciting period. Tesla predicted, wait a minute, what is this? Oh, I see, maybe there's a, what happened? Oh, thank you very much. See, there are always computer experts around, you know, young kids. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, okay. What is at 60 hertz, you have a huge ferrad, uh, you have huge steel, silicon steel for 100 kilowatt. Uh, this will be half, you know, this, this big. It'll be like a car, okay, at 60 hertz. You know what? Now you have Tesla induction motor, which operates at 1.5 kilohertz. And 150 uh, kilowatts or 200 kilowatts is this big and this in a cross section. Because it is only 50 hertz to 1.5 kilohertz, it's 30 times bigger in frequency, right? So that's what Tesla uh, told Edison at the time and say, DC is dull and boring. AC is has an exciting thing, you can increase frequency to whatever you want, okay? And shrink the size, shrink the material cost, etc. And we are not even close doing that, okay? You know, because we don't know, you know, I'm telling you now, I'm working on my concept now, we'll see later in the CAN presentation, to make a battery charger. You know, they talk about superchargers and all these things that, uh, uh, to charge uh, uh, 20 kilowatt uh, or 60 kilowatt uh, hour batteries for uh, 20 minutes in a car. But it's the size of the car. And it costs $100,000 and it's every 300 miles every which way you go. But the technology is here. But all we need to do is go from one and a half kilohertz on that induction motor. Hey, if you can make induction motor at one and a half kilohertz, this small at 200 kilohertz, shouldn't we be able to make the, the uh, charger, which is that much, at the 200 kilohertz? Because we don't, we are not doing it right. We are just doing it uh, wrong, okay? Yes. And uh, so, therefore, um, uh, that's the, uh, I think, I'll just um, finish this part so you got the lecture on um, uh, completed. This is original two converter. And a key advantage of that, which is now getting to be appreciated, is, is this, that this was the original converter. Capacitor was here. An inductor was here. And here we had that switch to ground. And we have this diode minus plus, diode to ground. 
how do we create isolation here? Very, very unusual and unique, and that really what makes it now uh, stand out with anything else which is available. You, you break this capacitor into two, Oh, sorry, <laughs> ended up being uh, too big. Into two in the series. And then this connection here, in, a, in a terms of the, this connection requires inductor. Why? Because when I put two capacitors in a series, how much is a DC voltage, original DC voltage across single capacitor, how much is split? I don't know, right? But if I put inductor here, what happens? This inductor has to have volt second balance just like these two, just like this volt second on a flyback inductor here, you have to have volt second balance, which gives you one other equation which relates these two volt second balances, so therefore that will determine the split between these two capacitances, okay? So now, and, but now this, this capacitor, this inductance, this capacitor has to be charged and discharged, has to be charge balanced, right? And this capacitor has to be charge balanced. Energy stored and energy released has to be equal in each single cycle, which means this capacitor will have a square wave current, but I1, I2, but average will be zero. And this one, the same thing. So what does it say for this inductor? There is no way this inductor will see any DC current, either coming from this side or from that side. So that, that means it is a magnetizing inductance with a very low, uh, very low ripple. You know? And therefore, you can split it into two windings. This connects here, and here is your perfect transformer. And you change the dot connection here, and that changes the direction of the diode, and here is your polarity non-inverting converter. And then uh, next uh, uh, level of that is you have a voltage source, you have uh, this, um, uh, again, like before, this inductor, this inductor and this transformer can be all combined in what I called at the time integrated magnetics, okay? So, so that's basically now you got all of it in, in it. So let me now move to uh, one other subject. Uh, uh, maybe Kay will talk about more in the future on that, uh, which is so-called uh, state space averaging. And what a state space averaging did is basically say, because it's the first converter that you saw before, that, uh, that it had a built-in uh, it had a built-in um, how you say the capacitor. So it had an energy storage and inductor. Uh, uh, in, um, volt second on inductor, volt second on inductor, and charge balance on capacitor. So you have uh, three equations, right? And what are three unknowns? DC current here, DC current there, and DC voltage here. So you get it. You have three unknowns and uh, three equations. You solve them for steady state conditions. So capacitor and voltage is, uh, a capacitor as a state is needed. So that's when I came up with the state space averaging. I said, it's not like a boost and a buck that you need all in volt seconds. In a general converter, you need a volt seconds on all inductances and an amp second charge balance on all capacitances to get a complete set from which you can work on, okay? All right. So